Okay, everyone, so back from my road trip, two weeks on the road in the van, and it has come up. How in the world do you live in the mountains and keep this van ready to go four seasons and all that stuff? How do you do it? And so let me show you. Okay, so in the van, just got back, two week long road trip. It's actually pretty messy in here. So it's kind of like my routine. Right now it is winter. I do live in Salt Lake City, Utah. So kind of my routine for coming back is vacuum out the entire van. Um, the dogs actually give a ton of hair in here, all that good stuff. Um, other than that, clean up snacks, restock snacks, and I make sure I do not winterize my van, even though I live in the, in the Rocky Mountains. Um, and it's been getting to about 18 or 19 degrees every night. So hard freezes every single night. And this week it started getting up into the low 40s, but generally it's been staying in the 30s, sometimes just right at freezing or just over. So how do I keep the van four season ready all the time and I don't winterize it? Whenever I come home with the van, I do a couple of things, but for you to be able to do this in your van or class B or RV, whatever it is, you have to know a couple of things. One, you have to know your equipment, your electrical equipment and all that good stuff. Two, you have to know where your tanks are, where your plumbing lines are at and everything like that. And I'm not talking about to the level that like you built your van or anything like that. You just need to generally know one, where your freshwater tank is, where your gray water tank is, where your black tank is and where your water pump is. If you have a furnace that heats up, let's say the van and your hot water or just a hot water heater separate, you need to know where that is too and where the lines are running to that. Second, you also need to understand your electrical setup and the systems that make up that stuff. So for me, I have a Xantrex Freedom X inverter and control panel, and I have a solar charge controller made by GoPower. So the model on this one is a GP PWM 30 SQ, but that really doesn't matter as much for what we're talking about. So let's get into it. All right, so outside, outside of Bertha, driver's side of the van. So for me, my van, um, the 2020 mod on a 2019 transit frame um, or chassis. So what I could tell you, and I think I've shown this before, is that my black tanks back here, at least the valve is, my gray tank is about the midship on the van is right here, two separate valves. But all my tanks are, are technically inside the van except for the gray tank. Okay, let me show you how that looks. It's kind of right here. This black thing right here with this flap hanging down is my gray tank. And actually, this is my gray tank heater that's kind of fallen off a little bit on the road, but gotta patch that up. One of the repairs you have to do when you have a van, things do break on the van, especially if you use it as much as I do. So patch that up. And as you can see, kind of down here, if I can get that in frame and get some light on it, I'm not sure, but I have my gray tank and then I actually have the little pipe that comes out into the valve right here. So all this is exposed on my van. Now, when I say that's the only tank outside the van, but I still have a black valve down here, here's what that looks like. So underneath the van, you can see, this is, I'm behind my black tank valve right now. And you can see right here is my black tank valve. I have this elbow that goes up into my van just above the spare tire here where the black tank is actually inside the van but that elbow and that valve to dump the black tank is exposed just like on the gray tank let me tell you why that matters so why that's important is while i have a tank heater one of these switches here i know you can't really see it because it's small it's actually this switch right here and it's actually on i touched it and actually i think it's fully broken um, from my last road trip but a lot of people get a false sense of security is to have tank heaters. Um, you see, you still have exposed elbows. So what I end up doing whenever I come in from going out of town in the van is I usually dump the tanks. And so I have a gas station that caters to like class B vans and stuff like that of people that do have to dump tanks and stuff because it's really popular here in Utah to have RVs. So it's probably if I'm overestimating it's maybe an eighth of a mile from my house it's super convenient for me so usually coming in before i stop uh, back home or usually the very next day if i come in late i go right there an eighth of a mile from my house i dump the tanks get them completely empty then what i do is i get this trusty rv antifreeze this is a negative 50 i usually use a prestone negative 100 it's an uh, orange one i don't think it matters but 
you know, I'm an American and we like all the bigger numbers and stuff. So I usually use a negative 100 um, down to negative 100 antifreeze. And I actually will pull, pour that directly down into the sink. So make sure it gets actually into the drain itself, actually in the, in the rear bath as well. Um, I'll put about a half gallon in the gray tank and I'll put about a half gallon or more in the black tank. Now, the gray tank on this van is 16 gallons. The black tank is 15 gallons. So in reality, if it's gonna be really cold, I know I'm gonna use up a lot of the van's tanks, I should put a full gallon in each. Now, what that does for me is it actually gets the valves that you see exposed, where the blade valves, where I'd actually have to dump the tanks, it makes sure that sitting in the bottom of those elbows is all this RV antifreeze. So great, yep, it's gonna slosh around all this stuff when I start using the tanks and driving the van, but if I have one full gallon to the 15 total gallons, it's enough to lower the freezing point enough to where those valves don't freeze up on me and those elbows don't get frozen up. Learned that the hard way on this road trip, this last two week when I did, um, camping in Ore, um, actually in a KOA, actually 12 degrees, couldn't dump my tanks before I got there, couldn't dump them when I got there. Morning woke up and that elbow on my black tank was just frozen solid. Opened the valve, nothing happened, like silence. It is the most deafening silence you will ever hear when you have an 85% full black tank. So um, ended up having to come home, went to that same gas station down the street from my house and about 15 minutes on my back under the van with a hair dryer in the elbow, dumped the tank just fine. So that's how I kind of know I needed to put one full gallon instead of a half gallon in that one. The other thing that I do that's great about this van bertha the fact that bertha has a furnace on board to heat the rest of the the coach or the van as they say my particular furnace is um is a truma it's not an esper or anything like that those diesel ones you see in a lot of the van builds mine's a, i have a gas fan so i actually have a furnace that runs on propane and it runs on electric and i think i've said that in some of my other videos my walkthrough video if you want to look at that one she has two heating elements, one 750 watts, the other one another 750 watts. So if you turn them both on, it's EL2, it's very high. So you have my furnace set to 60, back out of that, and that's my EL2 setting. So I have EL1, mix one, and mix two, mix one, and gas. So what that means for me with the van is that I can actually have this thing plugged in to either power running from the solar um, or running from the van's power and still power this thing and not run any propane from my propane tank to heat the van on the inside. And I, you see here, I keep it about 60. Now the way that I do that at home, again, I know what kind of equipment I have under the bunks that my particular van setup, I can either plug in 30 amp power, either from my generator or from shore power or I can plug it into my home. Now, most US homes have 15 amp service, at least at the outlets. And so generally speaking, if you wanna plug into an, a van or an RV to your home, you can do that. But a lot of the vans, depending on the systems they have set up, what you have bought, what you upgraded, whatever it is, sometimes you have to go into your settings and actually set it up for 15 amp service. And sometimes not all your systems run on that. What I found with, with this van um, is that this will automatically select between 30 amps from the van 30 amps from shore power, from a generator, or 15 amps from a, from a home. It automatically knows what you have it plugged into, and it shows it here. So usually this top light here, you can kind of see that. That top light usually means that I'm on shore power or a generator. The middle light means that I'm running exclusively off a of battery. So you can see the van thinks it's plugged into shore power or thinks it has a generator. Let me show you how I did that. So in my garage is where I actually have the, the van Bertha plugged up. So it's into a regular 110 outlet in my garage. And I'm using, I bought a spare kind of a RV, a 30 amp plug that plugs into Bertha there. Um, and what you have to do is you have to kind of get this adapter that's right here in the middle. So this yellow cord you're seeing is a normal heavy duty, heavy duty, heaviest duty I could find actually, um, indoor outdoor extension cord. And in the middle here is just an adapter. And it's a, what's known as a 15 amp adapter. It's really, really easy to find. And it just converts the regular household plug side to the 30 amp kind of weird three prong kind of crooked looking thing that you see. Um, he's plugging in there. I actually bought an extra cord. The one I have in the van has yellow ends on it. The one that I leave here at home has green ends on it. It's kind of the same deal. Yep, right, right there. You can see that it has a green light showing that I have power. 
have it plugged into the van. I have it locked in so that way no um, water or anything like that can get in there. Snow and actually with the lid closed like this it actually all the snow piles right up on that lid and I just like brush it right off and I'm going to unplug it. So it's actually pretty pretty handy. Also um, I have one of those actually in here as well in the van so this is actually what it looks like. There it goes. So if you're going to buy one of these just it's an RV adapter plug, 15 amp to 30 amp is what it says. I have one of these in a van as well. Just in case I boondock somewhere, like say at a friend's house, I can have something to plug into their home. Same deal. Um, I can run everything. I did not have that set up for some reason at my little brother's house in Hampton, Virginia, and they had hard freezes the entire time I was there. I ended up just using solar, crank amp the van and stuff like that to keep the batteries charged. But had I used that, I could have plugged into his house and just did exactly what I do here, which is just keep it about 60 degrees inside the van at the furnace and make sure all the tanks are good um, and nothing freezes up. And kind of like uh, one last thing to kind of note on how to winterize this thing without winterizing. So I know I mentioned up front that I put some of the RV antifreeze in the sink. I put some in the toilet here too. Um, I haven't really shown, but in this van, I actually have a really cool vanity like this that goes up and down and on this I actually usually if I've been using this as well and I think there's going to be any kind of water in the pipes the draining pipes or the sink I actually run a bunch of RV antifreeze down that as well I usually take about a half cup of water and chase it with that just to get it off of any of the plastic because this vanity is actually plastic to keep it lightweight and what I don't want is any of those chemicals kind of eating at that plastic and taking off any of the finish or anything like that so I make sure I do that you may hear other people that do a similar type of thing in these vans that sometimes these back doors are not insulated or anything like that. So what they'll end up doing is same thing I'm doing. They'll run a heat source inside the van, but they'll leave like this, the sink open like this to make sure that air can get down into the pipes, the warm air. Um, they'll actually come up here to the galley and in the galley, um, they'll usually open up all the cabinets just, just below the galley, especially like this one back here at the trash. And they'll say, yep, back there is where a lot of the, the sink pipes and the water inlets are. So they'll make sure that back there gets a lot of warm air into it as well. I know for a fact on, on this specific van, my fresh water tank is just underneath that bunk. That is also where my fresh water pump is. That is also where my furnace is at. It's also my, it's also my hot water heater. So on this specific van, there's nothing for me to really open up. And below the bunks, just on, on the front with the wood, there's like kind of these like uh, air conditioning looking vents to let air flow back there. Down below the bunks happens to be also where my furnace vents are at. So all of my hot air, again, flows to the floor of the van and kind of get, floats up. And there's a bunch of inlets in those bunks to let the air, the hot air go in there as well. So again, knowing where your water tanks are at, where your valves are at, knowing your electric equipment and knowing what kind of power you have. And if your, power, if your van can take the power from your house are very critical to keeping your van, your RV, your class B, whatever, your camper four season ready. Even if it's only be designed to work in three seasons, you can keep it four season ready by doing some of these tips. It's what I've been doing all season. And I have, I've yet to have any issue with anything freezing, breaking, anything like that at all, except my great tank heater. And I think that was more so of the road. I drove 6,000 miles in two weeks. And I think it just came off because I drove so freaking much and was using it like crazy. So other than that, that's kind of the whole thing to keeping the van ready to go. Moments notice for season use, I can come out, I disconnect the power from the van and that is it. That is all I have to do is I unplug the green plug and I am ready to go on an adventure. Period. And I'll be doing that this weekend. It's a three day weekend. So all right. So if you have any questions, comments, let me know. Hit me up in the comments. You can direct message me. Also like, subscribe if you haven't. Also, remember to check out my other channel, Beefcake Lynch Gaming. See you next time. Mm -hmm.